So with chapter three, we get to continue our exploration of triangles, revisit a few things that we should remember from grade 10, uh, Sokotoa, a couple of things from grade eight, the triangle measurement, all the angles inside a triangle measure 180 degrees, as well as the Pythagorean theorem. You should have at this point watched uh, this first video, Intro into the Pythagorean Theorem uh, on the Khan Academy website. Uh, that's theorem number one. Uh, stop at the 850 mark, of course, like you were already told. Uh, you don't need to know how to do that whole factoring square root thing. Uh, just once you get to that square root point, just find the square root. And as well as you should have watched the intro into the trigonometric ratios video, again on Khan Academy website, which reviews a little bit of uh, Sokotoa, sine, cosine, and tangent, and what those ratios stand for. So seeing as how you've done that, then we can move on to doing some examples. Find some angles. So here we have three different triangles, and these three different triangles are going to walk us through the three different trigonometric ratios, show us all the steps that we need to do in order to find angle measurements uh, in a right angle triangle. Number one, once we get there, number one, or the first triangle. So here's our first triangle. Something you should always remember to do uh, is to write this acronym down so that you can see it on your page somewhere. Because this acronym tells us and it defines the three trig ratios for us. That's a bad Sokotoa. Sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, those are the three trig ratios. So let's see how we use those. So once we have that thing down, uh, we need to uh, first label our triangle. <clears throat> we label our triangle uh, based on or in reference to the angle in the question. So here's our angle. This is what we're looking for. We know that opposite to the 90 degree angle is always the hypotenuse. Always, always, always. It's the longest side of a right triangle. Opposite to the angle that we're talking about is the opposite side. And then, of course, the last angle, uh, the one beside the angle that we're talking about, is the adjacent side. This should all be reviewed from grade 9 for you. A little foggy right now, but it should be reviewed. So now that we have labeled our triangle, we look at the information in the question. So we're looking for this angle here. What do we know? What do we have? We have the opposite side. We have the hypotenuse. So I look back to my three trig ratios, and I say, well, which trig ratio relates the hypotenuse and the opposite side? Well, it's going to be sine. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So from there, I write down my formula. My formula is sine of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. There's my formula. And as always, when we have a formula, the next step is to substitute what we know. Well, we know that we know that our opposite side is 14, and my hypotenuse is 35. I also know I'm looking for angle x, so sine of x is equal to 14 over 35. You could calculate that out to some fancy uh, decimal number if you so chose to do so. Uh, and if I could, actually I can't even calculate that, I don't have a calculator on me. So uh, what you do need to remember is that when you do have some kind of ugly decimal number, um, When you do have some kind of ugly decimal number, then you know, then you, that's a hint that you have to do the next step. When you're looking for an angle, is also another hint that you have to do that next step. And that decimal, that next step is if I know I'm looking for the angle, angle x is equal to, I have to use the inverse function of. Remember this, sine to the minus 1 of 14 over 35. Punch that into your handy dandy calculator. You get uh, 
578178, which is 24 degrees, because with angle measurements we can round to the nearest whole number. There's the first one. The second one, go very similar. Again, start with your triangle, label your triangle. There's my hypotenuse. This is the angle we're talking about. This is my opposite side. This is my adjacent side. Now I think to myself, okay, so I've got this triangle. I'm trying to solve for x right here. I know my adjacent side. I know my opposite side. So I go back and I look at that acronym. I look at that acronym. What trig function relates opposite and adjacent? Well, tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Knowing that, I write down my formula. Tangent of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. And again, like always, once I have my formula, I can substitute tangent of x is equal to my opposite side, which is 27, over my adjacent side is 45. This time I actually have the decimal number, so I'm going to write it down. Tangent of x is equal to 0 0.6. Now, here's your hint. I've got this ugly decimal number. I know I'm looking for an angle. So I think to myself, well, if I'm looking for an angle, angle x is equal to, I have to use the inverse function, not tin, sorry, inverse function of that decimal number. Punch that into your handy dandy calculator and you should get 30.96756 or 31 degrees. Now our last example. Very similar. Here's our triangle. Label your triangle. Hypotenuse. This is my angle. This would be my opposite side. This would be my adjacent side. What trig function relates? This is what I'm trying to solve for. I'm trying to solve for this angle. I have the hypotenuse. I have the adjacent. What trig function relates? Adjacent and hypotenuse. Ooh, blow up. Adjacent and hypotenuse. Cosine. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. I know what trig function I'm using. Cosine. Cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. I know I'm finding angle x. Cosine x is equal to my adjacent side is 65 over my hypotenuse is 82. This works out to a decimal number, cosine x is equal to 0 0.792687926896. And there's your hint. Ugly decimal number, got to do one more step. Looking for an angle, got to do one more step. So I go cosine minus 1. So angle x is equal to the inverse function of cosine of 0 0.7926, that's supposed to be a 6, 79268296, bracket, equals 37.56305, or 38 degrees. That is a super quick review on how to find angles using your three trig ratios. The next video I'll go through a couple of examples on how to find missing sides on those same types of triangles. So we'll see you in a second.